morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to Data Dialogues. Uh, Sam. This is an event in collaboration with Civic Data Lab and data.org. The objective of today's event is to better understand opportunities and challenges with opening up government data, sharing government data, and harnessing government data for uh, decision making, data driven decision making in SAM. And how we can build a community of data researchers and practitioners in SAM, which can leverage this data to drive more data driven changes, reforms in the state. So, a bit of a background about our organization. So, Civic Data Lab works with the goal of using data, tech, design, and social science to strengthen the course of civic engagement in the country. And how do we do that? We do it in a two pronged approach. One is by improving access to public information. And second, being how citizens can leverage this information to participate actively in governance. Uh, we have been working in several sectors uh, public finance, law and justice, urban development, uh, and lately in education as well. We work specifically to increase the data and tech capacity of all the actors present in this ecosystem uh, from governments, non profit, think tanks, media houses, universities, etc. Next, we are a team composition. So, we are a multidisciplinary team. Uh, we have technologists, data scientists, designers, policy makers, decision makers, uh, everyone is included here. And uh, we work very closely to take a multidisciplinary approach to, to research. So, what is open data? This is the question which we keep getting asked time and again. So, open data is something which enables uh, interoperability of data. Data shared and promoted it with the help of data standards, which could be reused to be harnessed. Uh, availability of data, ensuring data is available in modifiable form. So, PDF scan images, they are not open data. Data set, which is being released in machine readable format like CSV, XML, uh, JSON, something which you can modify uh, and edit in your uh, browser in your computer systems is something we are calling as uh, in an available modifiable form. Something which is reusable, it's machine readable in nature, could be uh, shared in so many forms and shapes so that new knowledge could be created and should promote universal participation. Should not have any re uh, restriction in terms of repurposing data and who can actually use this data. That's how we define open data. We are committed to grow open data ecosystem in India by keeping things open by default, uh, continue to collaborate and co-create, invest on multi-stakeholder partnerships, and create regular feedback loops so that we keep getting input from the community on how we can uh, Im improve this whole ecosystem and work with several stakeholders to make this data much more accessible and usable. So our focus sectors, as I was explaining, are Four key sectors public finance, law and justice, urban planning, and education. Uh, we are working in all of these for a couple of months now. And in all of these sectors, we have built open data platforms which release uh, data in machine readable format for you to access and work with. One such platform which you would have used, especially in this uh, ongoing budget season, is Open Web's India. It has now more than 16,000 data sets available in public domain. And you can download these data sets from national governments, state governments, municipal corporations, etc. All of those data sets are accessible here. Uh, as soon as a state government announces their budget speech uh, in the parliament, their uh, data set uh, keeps coming here in machine readable format. We also built several data tools for you. Access and more. Similarly, in Law and Justice, we have launched Justice Hub, which is an open source platform which enables crowdsourcing of the data. So, unlike budget, uh, Law and Justice related research analysis data is scattered across the community. So, with this platform, what we uh, work, we make sure that information from 
several sources collected by several members of a community could be contributed at one place in a access manner. That's where justice comes into the picture. And there are more open data platforms in building. Uh, we are trying to build a schemes dashboard where you can track uh, information of key schemes uh, like Fundraiser, National Health Mission, etc., at state, district, and, and block level. We are also building Assam Public Procurement Explorer, and luckily, uh, with, with all of you present today, we will be launching Assam Public Procurement Explorer in public domain for the first time today. Uh, and we are also working very closely with Urbani Foundation to uh, revamp Open City so that city level data is accessible in Kashmir. Now, why SM? Uh, why are we doing data dialogues here and what have been our uh, focus area in SM so far? So, I will just give a very quick summary of our work here. Uh, we started working in SM since year 2018 to build the tech capacity of uh, government departments. Specifically, we work very closely with the finance department, tax department, uh, auditing department, etc., to increase their data capacity enabling them to uh, work with the data sets they are sitting on and how they can regularly use it for decision making. Since then, we have been conducting regular workshops. Uh, and in these workshops, we try to come up with several ways like things like participatory budgeting, discussing how a framework of participatory budgeting could be deployed, or helping them train on several like, open data tools like Apache Superset, etc which they can use for their own data visualization, storytelling, analysis purposes. We were lucky to have Assam as one of our first state to commit to open format for budget. Uh, then finance minister and current chief minister uh, announced in their budget speech in 2019 that Assam would continue to publish their budget data in open format so that academicians, researchers, civil society groups, and everyone involved in the citizen groups who are looking into financial data would have access to budgetary information in machine readable format. This would help people to understand the budgetary allocations, expenditure, revenue, etc., as soon as the budget is being assumed, announced in the assembly, and work with this data to drive their own analysis. Follow by this announcement, even Odisha has started to uh, publish their machine readable uh, budget data in public. With the help of this machine readable data, which got published in year 2019, we built Assam Budget Explorer. It's a visualization tool where you can explore budget data in a much more easy manner. And every year, we modify this tool to have updated information of Assam budget, both in English and Assam. It's a bilingual. In year 2020, we worked with UNICEF Assam to pilot U report based free budget surveys. In this, we tried to target basically youth of Assam to submit their budgetary suggestions so that citizens can better understand uh, what is happening in the budget process and can recommend the state departments on how certain things could be prioritized. What you are seeing in the dashboard is the budget suggestions coming from public health. Similarly, there are other sectors. In year 2021, uh, when pandemic was at a peak, we were trying to study how the POXO cases, uh, cases related to protection of children against sexual offenses, are being uh, worked on in Assam. We look into from 2012 till 23rd April 2020, all the data of POXO cases in Assam registered through e court system. Try to see how the this uh, data can help us understand the implementation of POXO Act in SM. We have done a very thorough district-wise uh, analysis of this with help of Hub Center for Child Rights. And year 2022, uh, as we are starting the year with, with new initiatives, we are progressing on Justice Hub with Budget for Justice, dedicated only for uh, and I'm analyzing budget data related to law and justice, policing, prison reforms. We have a section coming in for Assam. 
Uh, we are also launching open contract in India, as I discussed. We are Assam would be one of the target states to expand our work. Now, briefly talking about unified national data platform and how we are working with Maybe NIC and data.gov.nt to expand on our work. So, unified national data platform is, is a new concept which uh, data.gov.nt has come up with. And it is focusing on increasing the uptake of data in the whole community. Both open data and shared by different uh, uh, agencies, crowdsourced data, which where the people can not just consume data but also contribute data like Wikidata, like OpenStreetMap, data exchange platform like Humanitarian Data Exchange uh, by United Nations or Justice Hub which I think we talked about. Uh, all these data sets, all these data platforms currently publish on their own uh, websites the data. There is no one place where all of this data could be brought together. That's where we are conceptualizing Unified National Data Platform uh, in the partnership with data.gov.nt. How uh, Unified National Data Platform would work? It would be a one-stop destination to search, access, use, and exchange all the data sets with the help of smart contract. It would also provide a developer sandbox for citizens to work with this data. It would help people to uh, register and publish as well as consume data in public, private, restricted and paid access. It would enable all these four kind of access, public, private, restricted and paid access. And people can contribute not just data, but also data artifacts. They can contribute to the code because the whole platform would be open source. Scrapers, data pipelines, they can contribute their data model, machine learning models, and they can contribute separate data standards. All of this would be free from any personally identifiable information to this whole ecosystem. We can make sure it's free from personally identifiable information. What we're trying to solve with Unified Data Platform, make AI-ready data sets more accessible, improve data citations, curate high-value data sets, make sample data sets more available accessible, reduce the cost of data acquisition, and enhance data credibility. It could become a centralized place for all the data sets. These be it GIS data set, be it fiscal data sets, be it data sets coming from several APIs. All of that could be accessible at one place. It would help enhance the collaboration and contribution. With that, I would now uh, hand over to Mr. Tika Mishra, who has joined us uh, through a Zoom link. And he would be talking about uh, the role of government data and good governance as part of his welcome address. Thanks a lot.